join us in Germany. Not just Germany, but Mayor Brewing. We have gone all the way to Poland and this is our journey back home. And this is the beast that's brought us. Honda CRV. So this car has brought us lots of comfort, lots of joy, fuel efficiency. We have basically my fiance, Alex, behind the camera. She is a visitor from Poland, so we went there to visit her nan family. And decided on the way back we're gonna give ourselves the next couple of days just to chill. So we're now at the Nurburgring, but we've been Berlin, Dresden, all these places. And this car has driven over 1600 miles so far in a couple of days. Fuel wise, it's been brilliant. Comfort wise, it's been brilliant. Practicality, brilliant. The only thing, when you, if you buy one of these, the only thing I would suggest you do is nothing else to the car apart from upgrade grade the infotainment system. That's a pioneer system with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and all that stuff. And that's been a lifesaver in this trip. Absolute lifesaver. Um, but the car, comfortable, spacious, got heated leather seats, aircon, not like we freaking need it in this weather, but it's been fantastic. Love this car. If we use the Mark II that I had before this, the 2 litre VTEC petrol, we would already be a thousand pound down in fuel. How many tanks put in this? Three, four? Four maybe. Yeah. Bear in mind this is Germany, so the speeds are 130 kilometers an hour. The average speed, and then you've got the de restricted autobahn, so fuel efficiency's not been the priority in this trip. Yeah, we're coming at the Nurbur Ring where everything is petrol head. And I'm here in a CRV. God damn it! So, the back of a CRV. Yeah, we've got munch and stuff because we're on a road trip. Um, that's my driving position. That's the passenger seat all the way back, and you still have loads of like. Obviously you've got that with cup holders, these go to where we want them to go, or put it back straight because most of them kick off. The seats are just, they're just really practical cars. Like these, fold down, fold up again, and then a click, and you can take the seats out so you can turn into a fan. Which I think someone has before because the roof looks a bit ripped. But, the price you pay for these cars when you compare it to, let's say, a Range Rover. They're miles ahead of practicality. Right. It's going to be full of crap, by the way. But you have massive boots. You have a boot divider, which is fantastic because all underneath here is just full of stuff. And then we've got, sometimes we sleep in the car, sometimes we've got the car stuff on top. Just, just all separate. You haven't got an electronic closing tailgate, it's a Honda. You've got a reverse camera right there, right in the middle of the Just a piece of car. So the engine in this particular one is the 2.2i DTEC, 148 brake horsepower. That's Antoine. Uh, most of them are 138 horsepower, but this one is 148 horsepower. It's got 10 more horsepower, but it's got like an extra 18 newtons of torque, so it's a bit better. It's good on fuel, it's, it's spread out the engine bay, if you look here. You've got the normal engine as you would over there, but then the turbo's all the way over here. It's quite spread out. Not good. You've got the power steering pump there. It was where you want it to be. Maybe that's my job. You take this cover off and you've got all access to down there because that's where the EGR is. It goes around there and comes down here, pipe does. Because apparently they're a common problem for the pipes going from the inlet manifold to the exhaust manifold. Uh, they crack. 
You know as soon as it's done it because you can just smell exhaust gases in the cab. But yeah, good engine all around. It pulls well, goes well, it's got a fuel. Bit noisy, but yeah. You join us driving through the Eiffel Mountains in Germany, uh, leaving the Nürburgring. And I've tested this car on the Nürburgring. Nürburgring. And it performed very well. Uh, <laughs> I'll put a little quick snippet of that in. Right, this is the twisties. This where one of the laps I went straight over that grass. Oh, the back end's just kicked in. Four wheel drives kicked in. Right, go again. Right, Beam, if you want to get past me, at least attempt. Because I need to look where I'm going, not back where you are. Staying to the right to let people freaking past. Oh, brake fade. Right, go, 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 go. Honda, if you're wanting to buy one, it impresses you on the Nürburgring. What else to say about it? It's really good on fuel. Like, it wasn't good on fuel on the Nürburgring. Like, what am I averaging now? I'm averaging 37.6. So, this trip, we've gone from Stoke on Trent in England. Oh, pardon me. Stoke on Trent in England to where's the place in Poland? Koszalin. Koszalin, which is northern Poland on the seaside bit of Poland. And we are on our way back, so we have currently done 1,809 miles this trip. Point eight. Um, the car has been brilliant. We have done a lot a lot of driving um, very comfortable quiet smooth good on fuel and on the autobahns in Germany it does a hundred easily and just cruise that hundred easily um, the most fuel efficient speed on the autobahns I found is about 80 to 85 so I've just been going 80 to 85 Apart from where it's obviously speed limited parts, so I've been going the speed limit. But the car is very impressive. I have, like I said earlier, fitted this here. It's a Pioneer touchscreen thing with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all that stuff. That for this trip has been a lifesaver because obviously Google Maps or Apple Maps, whatever, gives you live traffic updates. And it's just better than having a, a standard Tom Tom, by far. And when you want to find somewhere like, oh, where's a petrol station, or oh, where's the services, or oh, where's a restaurant, or oh, anything like that, you just ask it and it tells you. So we are now driving from Germany into Belgium. We're going to go spa because I want to see spa. That's like one of my things in my life. I need to go to spa to watch the Formula One at some point in my life. And this European trip has made me realise it's it's just easy. Just buy tickets for Spa and drive there. Because Spa's, what, two and a half hours from Calais? Get the ferry. But as the car stands, it's fantastic. It's very comfortable. The heated seats are coming very well because we're, we're doing this in... Well, it's currently 6th of November. It's 8 degrees right now, but the wind chills... Obviously, it doesn't matter if the wind chill was in here, but... Like this morning, it was cold this morning, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it'd be cold. Um, and 
going to stop saying that. What I was going to say is, for the, for the money you pay for a Mark III CRV like this, they are phenomenal. Phenomenal. The headlights are absolutely fantastic. The power is brilliant. The four-wheel drive system is brilliant. The brakes are very good. They've just overheated on the ring, but I was expecting that anyway. Um, but they cooled off and started working fine after a couple of cool, when we coached around corners. It drives true, it drives straight. This particular one is, I think, don't quote me this, I think it's a CRV Lux. I think that's what it says. We're still on 86,000 mile. And it's just pocket. We did have a one worry when we were coming into Dunkirk, no, no, not Dunkirk, Dresden. We'd just come off an autobahn straight into the town of Dresden and it became stop start traffic. Every time we went from a red light and started off on a green light, there was a bit of smoke going out the back. And I was a bit concerned, I'm like, hmm, what is this? But it stopped and I've been playing around ever since and it hasn't smoked, even around the ring, yeah, it didn't smoke, I was looking. So I reckon I just caught, stuck, like come off the motorway or autobahn or whatever, as it was doing a regen and just caught it in the wrong time. Because the engine sounded fine, I still have full power, no lights come up. It was literally just as as I was setting off. As soon as I'm into second, there was no more smoke. And it wasn't like it was coloured either, it was just smoke. But CRVs, I highly recommend them to anybody. But upgrade that, upgrade the head unit because the system that come with it was far, far outdated. I reckon it was outdated even if you knew. The dials are brilliant, I love them. They've got like a blue light at night that goes around the dials and it's just really nice. It just feels, and everything feels, like you think Hondas all are horrible and cheap. Yeah, this bit here, well, that's not even cheap, but like, everything just feels nice. It's all good, it's all lovely. This is all lovely. Sit, six speed manual, we're reverse, and reverse camera, factory fitted. Lovely and spacious, lovely and comfortable. <laughs> One thing you don't like into my seat is all electronic, so all the adjusters on it is electronic. Yours is manual. Um, I was looking at a Volvo XC60 before buying this because I had a Mark II CRV before. Um, but for the price and the equipment you get, standard, you just can't compare. CRV just wins all over. Yeah, you haven't got the the badge of a Volvo, but. If you're not one that likes to show off or gives a shit about the badge, so I've used a winner all day long. Um, 